information, but they also had first-hand information. Look in verse 22. The Bible says, Yea, and a certain woman also of our company made us astonished, which were early at the sepulcher. And when they found not his body, they came, saying that he had also seen a vision of angels, which said that he was alive. And certain of them which were with us went to the sepulcher and found it even so as the woman had said, but him they saw not. They had first-hand witnesses of those who knew him. Let me ask you a question. You ever know anybody that has come to know Jesus? You know that kind that get what the Bible says, born again. Like the kind, you know, where God like radically changes their life. You ever know anybody like that? I mean, I know that we're living in a day and time where people like the major on the hypocrites, but what about the real deals? <laughs> I mean, what about that individual that you know them most of your life or in some capacity? You know exactly who they were, and all of a sudden they have this, what most people call a religious experience, and it like revel. Before that, they never cared about talking about Jesus, never wanted to be in church. I mean, anything to do with religion, they was like, nope, not me. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, it's everything to them. Real deals. Amen. You ever know anybody like that? Well, if you do, then guess what you've also got? Not only historic accurate information, but you've got firsthand information. Me personally, I think people who major on hypocrites, they do so just because deep down they don't want to believe. Can I give you the honest truth about that conversation? You can justify if you would like to, or you can feel justified in blaming your unbelief on hypocrites. But here's the truth. Having an experience with a hypocrite will not excuse you or be acceptable reason for you when it comes time to be judged. Everybody that dies in unbelief will be, judged, will be judged and ultimately punished because they're a lawbreaker. There's no addendum in the scriptures that says, oh, you had an encounter with a hypocrite. So you get a pass. Now, here's why it don't work that way for. Because if you have seen the truth or heard the truth of the gospel, then you heard this, that as a human being, you are a sinner. It ain't about anybody else. It's about you. It's about your position and standing before God. And that's why God will hold us accountable in the manner that He was or that He will, excuse me, because He's made us aware of our condition and He's made a way to change that in salvation through His Son so nobody's getting a pass. Even if the devil uses those kinds of things to keep people lost and on their way to hell, the bottom line is this. We are without excuse because it doesn't matter who, who, who lives a life of hypocrisy. I know one that didn't. That's the one that redeemed me. Amen. And the bottom line is this. They had first-hand account. And I look back over my life, and I can't say that before I got saved that I had a ton of experience seeing great Christianity lived in front of me, but I had enough light in that that whenever I was exposed to the light of this, I knew then it all rested on what I'd done with Jesus Christ. Amen. And if you've heard the gospel, listen closer to me now, you'll be judged on the light you've had, not the phony that you saw. I don't know where the rationale come in or how Satan has so uh, marvelously deceived the mind of people. Like there's some kind of verse in here that says if you as an unbeliever run into a phony or a hypocrite that you will be somehow another excused. If that was the case, instead of spreading the gospel, why don't we just show everybody the phonies? They would then be safe when they died. But that's a lie of the devil. Phonies don't give you a pass because there's one that was not a phony. He perfectly lived up to the law of God. He embodied righteousness 
a, at all times. And can I say this right here? They had the firsthand information lived right before them.